and gentlemen, welcome to the Untapped Podcast. My name is Jacob Gable. And my name is Jacob Words, guys. Welcome to episode 105. If this is your first time joining us for the Untapped Podcast, first of all, thank you. We are thrilled to have you here with us. We've actually got five main formats of our show. So first, we have Forging Fortitude episodes. Now, in these episodes, we cover the mental side of our brand. Okay, we go over our anecdotal experience with mindset and mentality, and then we pass on advice and tips to you guys to then apply to your own lives. Next, we have physical vitality episodes. Now, in these episodes, we really get to showcase our expertise because you have two certified personal trainers. So in these episodes, we cover everything to do with fitness, the gym, nutrition, diet, supplements, fitness programs like 75 Hard, and sometimes we will even take trending topics within the fitness industry, and we will give our thoughts and opinions on those. Damn right. Great start for the first two. As usual, ladies and gentlemen, our third format is our breaking news format. That is when we go over current events currently going on in the world. We might bring up articles that are going on. We give our opinions on it. We call the BS out, that type of stuff. Israel Moss is a good example of that. Obviously, we're not war experts, so we're not talking about stuff like that much, but that's a good example. Now, our fourth example, our fourth format, I should say, is our masculinity-based format. That is called the Knight's Table format. Keep in mind, I'm 25, Ford's is 25, Mitch, our producer, is 23. We're not coming to you as some perfect man on a high horse. The only perfect man to ever exist is Jesus Christ. Because of that reason, we are talking about how masculinity is paramount in our current world and bringing it back in full force. Now, our fifth format is our guest format. It's what we have for you today when we sit down with an entrepreneur, fitness professional, athlete, somebody that has a great story, and we learn a lot from them, and we also, uh, you guys will learn a lot from these episodes that we have for you today. Super exciting. Our last thing to introduce is our producer and my brother, Mitchell Gable. What's going on? Hey, it's unfortunate. Uh, I lost the title of the most handsome man today in the room. That's true. That's true. Our guest does take yeah, that title right. today. That's yeah. right. He absolutely takes that from me, Mitch. <laughs> I shouldn't say last thing to introduce either. I did say that, and I was like, oh, true. wait, we do have one more thing to true. introduce. Technically. We do. We do. Interesting. So, guys, we have been hinting at uh, at having our next guest episode for probably, what, three or four weeks now? Something like that, yeah. Um, yeah. Been super pumped about this. A few of you know this was happening. Um but I, I couldn't be more excited to bring this one Dude, to you. So, so excited. Before we introduce him, just a little little get to know him. <laughs> the rap okay? sheet. The before, rap sheet. Yeah, that's right. The rap <laughs> sheet. So uh, this guy, I don't know who he is yet, but this guy. All right. Haven't heard of him. Yeah. He uh, <laughs> was drafted in the 23rd round of the MLB draft in 2009 by the St. Louis Cardinals. Hometown team. No hometown. big deal. Mm-hmm. No big deal. Played in, 10, in parts of 10 big league seasons, a little over eight years of MLB service time. Mm. For those of you that don't know what MLB service time, basically that means just time in the big leagues, like on the active roster. Mm. So he's got 624 career big league hits, 118 career big league homers with 249 career pro homers Mm. across all levels. Kind of badass. 250 (laughs) 250 pro homers. No big deal. No big deal. 399 career big league RBIs. And this is probably the biggest stat stat here. Okay. The biggest one. Four career big league stolen bases <laughs> which is massive That's huge. <laughs> <laughs> and then easily the coolest one two world series appearances with one world series ring mr matt adams how you doing man doing great thanks for thanks for having me here guys and, and super pumped to to jump on this show and, and be a part of this podcast yeah, yeah man it's been Hell it's yeah. uh it's an honor to have you here obviously like we've kind of developed a relationship over the past year you know we met last off season um been working together for a couple now a couple off seasons which has been a really really cool opportunity you know i told these guys you know my family whatnot it's like i grew up watching this guy and like here i get a chance to mm-hmm. kind of be on his personal hitting team in a way you know in the off season so it's been very very cool to get to develop a an actual friendship with you and you know right before we started recording we kind of talked about how professional athletes like you guys are still real people yes. you know and most yeah. people don't realize that yeah and um, you know no fault to them necessarily because you know kids grow up idolizing athletes and you know we all did in this room and you know as soon as you get the opportunity to consistently be around someone like yourself or we've talked about Jeff Lavecchio um, Brock Wilson is another one you know we get to be around a lot former pro hockey guy you quickly realize like these guys have lives they have feelings they have emotions they have thoughts on things you know they're not just baseball 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 hockey 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 football you know whatever you know so that's been the coolest thing for sure yeah and and I you saw it the other day you know it, not every session in the cage is, is going to go great. A hundred percent. You know, you see the those emotions come out, and mm-hmm. um, to your point, like we are real people and and we're human beings, and 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 we do have feelings and and emotions and sure. and stuff that that affects us in in different ways, and um, it's just nice to know that like 
to show people that you know that stuff does happen yeah and, yeah, absolutely and, and we're real like we're men but we we have that emotional side to us Dude, absolutely where we hold us hold ourselves to a higher standard absolutely you know and there's there's also there's there's layers to professional athletes as well you know we were again we were talking you know when there's athletes getting scrutinized by the media or on social media or whatever like they have families you know they have wives they have kids they have parents that are seeing all that you know and it's like people don't realize that you know regardless if it's a professional athlete or just you know sometimes we get we get hey comments and stuff too on our stuff or dms and whatnot it's just like we're out here trying our best right you know yeah, exactly. like we're out here trying our best we're putting out good content we're trying to help people trying to help them better their lives and your only goal is to tear us down through social media yeah. i mean really like you got nothing better to do <laughs> You know, and, so and, and I like I'll say like to everyone listening and watching this, like like when that stuff happens, like that's not a reflection of of you guys. That's a reflection of what's going on with the people that are sending out Absolutely. those hate comments. Definitely. So it's like like the the ones that that are able to you know navigate through those those hate comments and, and come out on the other side on you know better side is are the ones that, that realize that you know it's it's not a, a reflection of right. who you are as a person it's a reflection of what they got going on yes in their personal life that, that no makes doubt. them navigate that that negative energy yeah Dude, no, no doubt 100%. no doubt it, it's so interesting you say that because you know you feel almost bad for the people that send that type of stuff because you know if, if the way you have to get the anger out in your life is going at somebody else, whether it's a professional athlete or somebody else in your life, it's, it's a little bit d disappointing in a lot of ways because it's like you, you couldn't find another outlet for that. You know, right. like exercise like we talk about on here, like, you know, having a great family and going to your family about it or talking to them or talking to your close friends. Instead, you have to go online, which social media allows yeah. for that to be the case, well, which and, is pretty and bad. It, and it allows people to, to hide in a basement behind, behind a phone screen, behind a computer mm -hmm. screen. Mm hmm and be able to send those comments out and and they feel pumped up about like it empowered yeah. by it yeah, yeah. Like, but it, but if you would meet that yeah. person on the street they would run they would turn they wouldn't around say the other way. they wouldn't say they would not nope. confront that person no. and and shoot them straight to their face they would they would cower and they would they right. would run away right and you, ju you just like if if we're really going to you know make this world a better place and mm -hmm. and get us back to to being the America that everybody wants, wants knows and to loves, be, yeah. then then we're gonna have to make a change in in that realm and and not empower the people that yeah. that want to shoot out that hate. Right, yeah. right, and that's it takes all of us standing our ground, standing Absolutely. for what we believe in, you know, and and we talk a lot about that as well. And it's like figure out what your morals are. And honestly, if you're in this country, like it shouldn't be overly difficult. You right. know, we have a lot to be thankful in this country. Exactly. You know, and it's like so figure out what those are and stand for them. If someone challenges on them, don't back down, you know. And like you just said, these people that are, you know, that you see in the media and whatnot, and you know, all the, the blue-haired crazy people like we like to call them <laughs> and whatnot, and 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 you know, you guys know the type. It's like if you confront them, they don't they don't fight back. They run away with their tail tucked in between their legs. Sometimes literally their tail because they think they're furries well, and stuff. That's, <laughs> that's a whole other conversation. Yeah. <laughs> and, and and what I was saying, like and like I don't want to make this into like a political sure, thing or, sure. or whatnot but like like you have to like like the when america was so great like people were allowed to have conversation and yes. have mm. and and voice their own opinion mm -hmm. where now it's like if you if you voice your own opinion you're getting scrutinized for you're it. the bad guy one way or another yeah. you're getting scrutinized for it and and where like where was the where's the power of mm -hmm. freedom of speech right Absolutely. you know right. this is your opinion this is my opinion we can have a conversation yeah. about it. it doesn't mean yeah. that if I don't like your opinion that I hate you exactly or yeah. that I like or I think you're a bad person like right. that we got to get away from all that yes. stuff yeah, let's let's hash it out our opinions are different cool let's hash it out see where we have common ground exactly and go from exactly. there yeah. yeah exactly yeah yeah well we've got a few questions laid out for you we also actually at the end we'll have a, a question from a listener which that'll be cool as well but uh so first one so obviously we'll start kind of on the baseball side of things Big league season. It's a long season. You know, it's up to what nine months long from spring training if you win the World Series. You know, it's a mm -hmm. long and it's basically year round if we're being honest. Yeah. You know, it was probably what a month maybe after the season ended, you were back in with us. Oh yeah. I Something took, like that. I mean, I knew like I like the last couple of off seasons I took, you know, month, maybe yeah. five weeks to to really before I picked up a bat. I think this year 
I took a week off of maybe training to like let my body kind of decompress from the season and then yeah. I got right, right into my off season program yeah. and a week after I started that off season program I wanted to pick up a bat yeah and then get back in the cage because I knew yeah. I had stuff to work on mm-hmm. and I wanted to become better for you know the 24 season sure yeah. sure so what is kind of the what are some of the mental challenges and during a season like that um and and how does that translate to life and then on the baseball side, how do the teams kind of aid in helping players through that season? Yeah, I, I'll start with, you know, the the team side of it. They Most teams now, they have, um, you know, like a mental skills coach or um, somebody on staff that, that is really, you know, a great asset to for players to come in if they want to talk about sure. certain stuff. They We had a really good one. Um, his name was Mark Campbell with the Nationals. Uh, when I was there in, in 18, 19, he was dynamite. He was really? uh, he he was the one that like we built such a good relationship that he married my wife and I. Oh and, wow! In nineteen, after the wow. okay the World Series, so like you know the teams do have have very good um, resources when it comes to that. I I think you know the challenges that that you endure on the mental side, like in the season. I mean, you're enduring mental mental challenges each and every day. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you show up to the ballpark, and um, it's it's all about how you combat those. Like with you know, you got to kind of develop a routine. Sure. Uh, I'm I'm a big routine guy, mm-hmm. so I've you know over talking with my wife who who has a lot of experience with the mental side of the game, all professional sports. Um, sat down with her whenever I started working with her in the off season of 2016. And just knew that I needed, you know, that aspect of it. Mm-hmm. I, I knew that I was I was good on the field. I knew that, you know, I can make those changes. But it was, you know, when I would feel stressed, whenever I would feel anxious, like what tools can I pull out of my bag mm-hmm. to help me get back into my, you know, the effortless kind of no thinking involved and just going out there and trusting my ability. Yeah. And, and that routine was, you know, a lot of breath work. Mm. Um, Underrated. Very, very underrated. Very underrated. Yeah. Um, and, and it would start like, you know, I'm a big, like, I wake up in the morning and, and like, I'll meditate. I don't, I, don't need to, I don't need to meditate for 30 minutes. I don't, like, you know, sure. everybody works different ways. You know, I have, like, a little 5 to 10-minute routine that I, like, just, you know, kind of breathe and, and mm-hmm. get my mind ready for the day and, and whatnot. And, like, that, that's big in, in season. Being yeah. able to wake up and, you know, start that day right, mm-hmm. getting, you know, my mindset right before I go into the field. Because, I mean, a lot of people don't know, like, we, for a night game, like, we're getting there 12, 30, 1 o'clock. Okay. And yeah. then we're not leaving till midnight. Midnight, Like, we're yeah. there wow. all day. And right. And so, like, that's why routine, like, was big for me. Yeah. Because, like, there's a lot of downtime. Sure. Well, and that's and one it, thing you can control, too. Yes. You know, obviously, you can't control the game. We know that. But that is something like, okay, I can wake up every single day and I can do this. Yep. I can take control of this. They can get me ready for the day and, and that kind of thing. So I think that probably comes with it as well. Yeah. And, 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 and the last thing I'll say about the whole mindset thing is like you, you cannot be scared to like talk to somebody about it. Mm. Like mm. don't run from it. Like if you're feeling anxious, you're feeling stressed, ask somebody for help if you don't know, if you don't have that routine set up to, sure. to help you get back to your normal flow state. Find somebody that does. Find somebody that has experience, or a fellow teammate or friend that mm. that seems like that that you know talking with them. That's what they do. Don't hide from it. Don't yeah. run from it. Like like nip it in the butt and, and get ahead of it. And and that's that's one thing that like helped me out was because before sixteen, like I didn't do any like not like consciously I didn't know I did any like mental work mm-hmm. and. And that's one thing that I'm I'm thankful for now is like I have a routine to like really you know get my mind locked in to to be able to go out there and, and function at a high level for two and a half three hours for a game. Yeah. yeah. How would you say it translates to the game? So when you're in a not as good of a mental state, do you notice your play suffers on the field, and then vice versa? Yeah, I, I think you know, and and even I'll I'll take it a step further, like even in the off season when when the results don't matter like yeah. i i battle it sometimes to where i like i'm stepping in the in the box of a of the cage mm-hmm. wondering what my hands are doing wondering what my feet are doing if i'm not feeling confident sure 
if I'm feeling confident, I'm stepping in the box, not a care in the world, right. not really w- worrying about my hands, my feet, my setup, sure. my swing. I'm just taking my swing and trusting it. Right. But when you're not in that that right frame of mind, for me, I start wanting to try to fix things to, to get me like back that. To, to that instead of, for me, it's rarely ever like a swing problem. Mm-hmm. And you've heard, sure. heard, heard me say that multiple times it's it's more a mental mm-hmm. you know thinking too much whenever yeah. i get in the box so like i think if, if if i'm feeling that if i'm not in the great you know mindset going into like in a bat or like a a play in the field like mm-hmm. I'll, I'll i'll come out of like my ready position and just take a couple quick mm. deep breaths mm. kind of like to reset my system and and really like have a few like mantras like like mental cues for myself to like kind of get me back to that that like right mindset so i can i can focus on the task at hand and not worrying about stuff that i can't control yeah which i think that's big time i mean you know if you're if you're playing at bush stadium you got forty five thousand people looking at you you know and so there's there's even more pressure on that so if you're already in a negative headspace you add that pressure but you have these little cues and little mantras that you can literally do out on the field or in the dugout or in the clubhouse or whatever kind of get you back into your into your spot like i think that's that's a phenomenal thing yeah you know? and, and i wish i would have known known about that earlier sure and like but like i i'm the type of person that like you know you go through things and, mm-hmm. and you learn things at different stages of your life and and that was just the time that i was meant to to learn yeah that area of it and i'm thankful for that now I, yeah. I know that i have you know that routine those steps that that i can take if i'm not feeling like myself and to do my best to to get back to being able to function at a, at a high level. Yeah. You know, one thing that was interesting you said is you were talking about how go talk to somebody essentially is what you're talking about. Earlier we kind of talked about how people seem to think athletes are bulletproof essentially and that you guys have, you know, you, you guys have no care in the world. It's just straight focus and nothing goes on mentally outside of that. You know, I, how, how do you combat that when, you know, somebody might be idolizing you and, but in reality, I mean, you're, like you said, a regular person. Yeah. You know, how does that work? I think you have to be, you know, you have to be confident in yourself to know that, like, I mean, you do have, you're, you're essentially your role model for, for kids. And, yeah. and, you know, Matt Adams, the player is, is possibly not the highest role model compared to, you know, Bryce Harper or Acuna and all that. But like, like, I want everybody to know that it's like, it's okay. And it's, it's normal mm-hmm. for, for, you know, people, not only athletes, but like, you know everybody in life like you're gonna go through some stuff where like you have to like be okay like talking to somebody like mm-hmm. finding that somebody that you feel comfortable and yeah. and confident and trusting to be able to go and, and share that with them and to to be able to get back to to operating at your best self absolutely yeah absolutely so honestly the second question we have for you i was super excited about so essentially what the question is is one when when you were coming up when you were younger even like teenage years into the big leagues, how you are at now, how difficult is it to maintain and keep good relationships in the big leagues? Is it, does it make it more difficult? Does baseball, has that baseball ever made that more difficult? Have you had to, you know, have shifts in certain relationships and that was, that was caused maybe by the big leagues or by your dedication to your craft? What did that look like? Um, That's a great question. I, I think, you know, coming up, you know, I, I grew up in a small, like central part of, of Pennsylvania, like yeah. of, of a town of like maybe a thousand people. <laughs> now I think there might be like, like 1,200 <laughs> 12, 1, people there, but like, mm. ki- like kind of like essentially like everybody knows everybody yeah. and like yeah. everybody wants to be in, in your business. And like, for me, like I've like, I started playing baseball whenever I was three years old. Like my mom and dad got videos of me like hauling around bats <laughs> yeah. and awesome. all this at, at three years old. And like, I, I went to my dad, I think seven and eight years old, like, and I wanted to like get lessons. And that wasn't like heard of like back like in like my area. So like, baseball is all I've like all I've known, all I've done, and like it, it's harmed. Like I've lost some friends because yeah. of that. But like, I knew that like, I my core. I got like six, seven close friends to this day that love it that I grew up with. And like, yeah. oh wow, our relationships That's awesome. like are like, we could go like. There's some of us like we go like six, seven months without like picking up the phone and talking. But sure. like we'll pick up the phone like over the holidays and, and, and catch up. And it's like, we had a conversation yesterday. Like, yeah. 
so that like mm-hmm. those relationships were were unharmed like my close group of, of boys like we like are bulletproof in a, in a sense with our friendship but like i had family members that didn't like how much i was putting like wow. like this was like high school like college sure. Age. sure and then like whenever i got like drafted like my time was baseball and yeah. like yeah and it had to be. And, and i didn't and, mm. and i loved it I loved like being dialed in and, and and only caring about baseball and like my my mom and dad's like relationship with me like kind of suffered to like a point like whenever I was like away like sure I wouldn't pick up the phone and like call them and I know now that like you know it, not, not a day's guaranteed so like it, there there's got to be like a fine line sure. of like honing your craft working at your craft but but still like being able to maintain mm-hmm. relationships and and some people will get it some people will support you and then there's other people that that won't and Mm -hmm. and those people that don't and aren't willing to like adjust really aren't going to be your 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 good friends anyway yeah so like that's the way i i kind of approach like those relationships and like the relationships i've built like on the field like in the big leagues and and in pro baseball like there's there's a lot of a lot of guys that i still keep in contact with like yeah that i played with whenever I i was a rookie and they were on their way out or vice versa like i'm like later on in my career now and like i developed some good relationships with with young guys mm-hmm. yeah. and like and even like managers and gms like i love being able to like pick up my phone and be like and i got you know so and so's number i want to i want to reach out to them and see how they're doing like yeah it, i just think i think mm-hmm. it's important to have it like as many friendships and relationships as you possibly can yeah, yeah dude. and it's funny too like i'm sure some of those people when you were in high school college and pursuing the dream of making it to the big leagues the people that were like oh matt's just so focused on baseball he's he's too good for us now when you make it to the big leagues those are probably the people that are like yeah i've supported him oh, yeah. i knew him back yeah, in high school we're great work. buddies yeah, 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 asking for tickets yeah. and stuff like that it's and, like and get the worst out of here was like, <laughs> like whenever i was like because i went to i went to college at slippery rock which was like 55 minutes like north of pittsburgh okay so like still in pennsylvania like still around like yeah. you know a sense my hometown sure like, and then whenever I, you know, debuted and I would come into Pittsburgh or come into Philly or come anywhere close, like driving distance, mm-hmm. everybody would come out of the woodwork. Oh, I believe it. Yeah. Hey, can I get four tickets for this weekend's game? <laughs> oh, you know, like, special. Like it, yeah. it, like, it got to a point where, like, I like I told my mom and dad, I said, I'm, I'm going to need you guys to, like, be the mediator here. Like, mm-hmm. I'm going to need you guys to be the bad guys because i I got to focus on going out and playing the game. Like, yeah. I can't worry about responding to this phone call and telling them yes or no for tickets. Like, right. That's just not like that's just not something that I want to worry about. No, yeah. like so. And you should. Like, can you guys help me out? And like so, we like we came up with a rule where it was like immediate family only. Yeah. Like if immediate family wanted to come, and then obviously like my close group of friends, like, like guy friends, and like stuff. Yeah. yeah, they would come in. I would I would you know get them tickets, and that wouldn't be an issue. But it's the people that like you you know like you said didn't talk to like since 10th grade in high school and then, like, <laughs> you know kind of shit on me for like mm-hmm. you know being so busy with baseball and then like right. oh you know he made it to the big leagues let's go support him yeah like, we're, right. you know we're, we've been best friends like yeah. i don't got time for that no mm, no. no definitely not no. and that's something you know we we pay a lot of attention to andy frisella you know with first form and whatnot and he talks about that a lot as well on the business side you know when you're pursuing an entrepreneurial dream like what we are right now mm-hmm. you know you're going to have those people that they're going to fall off. And then whenever you get big time and, you know, you're making money and you're, you know, maybe more in the public eye or whatever it is, they come out. It's like, oh, I've supported, you know, Jacob and Jacob since they started. It's like, no, you haven't. Right. No, you haven't. Exactly. We haven't heard from you in yeah. seven years, yep. dude. Like, it's it's and, not and, like we don't keep track of that shit. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And, and yeah. you're going to know, like, yes. like, you know, and, and like I had a like it was to a point where like I knew like I would see a number. and I'm like, it's just not even worth it. <laughs> yeah. It's not right. even worth it. If to I don't like have it answer. saved, like yeah, not important yeah. enough. Yeah. So like, I, it's like it's a shame like that some people like operate that way, but like, it is what it is. And yeah. like, yeah. like Andy does a great job of like giving you tips and tools to like really mm-hmm. navigate that area yeah. of the you know entrepreneurial like dream. Sure. Like knowing that like you're gonna have to deal with that stuff. Yeah. And like, as athletes, like we we deal with it as well. And mm-hmm. it's just like you know the hardest thing to do is is say no. Right. Like expect like for me, like I like I love to please people. Like yeah, I love heart. to like yeah, yeah. make make sure. people mm-hmm. proud and and all that. So like early on, like, yeah, I was like I was giving tickets left and right. Mm. But then it got to a point where like like people think that those tickets were like free. 
Yeah. And like in the minor leagues, yeah, like you get like a certain number of free tickets, like if you're at home or if you're on the road. But like in the big leagues, like you're like as like team wants as, that money. Yeah, we're, we're like we're pay- <laughs> like obviously we get like a discounted, of course, price, sure. But like you know, I had I had a group you know one time early on in my career they wanted like ten or eleven tickets. Holy, and I'm shit. like that's like. <laughs> Like I'm not like that's that's a big ask. Like if you're not like my mom and dad, like bringing like sure. my family, like that that's a big ask. Yeah, like, that's a right. bold. That's a bold statement. <laughs> it, was, it was like their bachelor Come party out. or something yeah. like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> like, I'm not even entertaining. Like, hey, we'd this, like green seats. Like, yeah, you know, yeah, opening yeah. day at Bush. Like, mm, no, I don't think so. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's funny. So what about the romantic relationships? Like how? So you're married now. You have a couple stepkids. How difficult is it to maintain that? Like, obviously, your wife, like, she gets it. Yeah. You know, yeah. she's she works with professional athletes. Yeah. She's been doing that a long time. So, obviously, when you guys met and you started to develop a romantic relationship, like, that was an understanding, you know, that this was how life was going to be. But, like, what is that like, you know, maintaining a family, a wife, kids, things like that? Yeah, I mean, it's, like, it's tough. Mm-hmm. And, and, like, I'm lucky in a sense, like, where my, like, my two stepkids are, like, grown up. So, like, they're, sure. like... You know, my stepson's a sophomore in high school, and my oh, my nice. stepdaughter's yeah. a, a freshman at University of Miami. So like, like the hard parts out of the way. Like my wife, yeah. like already like ra- like her and like their dad, they raised them. Yeah. And now yeah. I get to come in and be like, it's like kind of like a cool time for like me to like yeah. be yeah. like part of their family. Sure. So like, but it's tough because like when we like first started like dating and stuff like during the season, like the kids like went away to summer camp, so they were gone for mm. seven weeks in the summer. So like. I, I didn't like once I left for spring training in February, I didn't see them till I got home at yeah. the end of this wow. season in October. And like, that's hard. Like, oh, I'm like, sure. Like, and they're not even like my, like, they're not even like my blood kids. Sure. And like, yeah. it was, it was hard. And like, my wife does a great job of like setting out time, like to make sure that she can travel and, and whatnot, like, pick the cities that she wants to come into and visit, mm-hmm. come in for like home stands and whatnot. So like, like when the kids would go away to to camp, like she basically would stay with me for you know two months at a time. Oh wow! If she didn't have anything mm. back here in in St. Louis, uh-huh. corner back here, so like that made it super nice. Yeah. So like I was lucky when it came to her because like you said, she got it. She gets the lifestyle. She understood, mm. and and she like she told me like I don't want to like I don't want to pull you away. Like I know that this is your dream. It's oh, awesome. Mm-hmm. And I don't want to wow. pull like I don't want to do anything to pull you away from, yeah. you know, being able to pursue your dream. And like we That's have this amazing. conversation before like I start my off-season training. Like we come up with a plan, we come up with like the off-season program, and she does not want like to do anything to where like I have to alter. It. And and obviously life happens and like sure. she's got to make, sure. you know, some changes and whatnot, but like she really gets it. So like when it comes to like you know the romantic side of the, like relationships, like I'm I'm lucky and, and blessed that I have somebody that like supports me and mm-hmm. what I want to do and 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 vice versa. Like she just got a real estate license, so like I'm like all in on like wanting to like support her and, yeah. and be behind her of of her wanting to like chase her dreams now Absolutely. as well. Yeah. So like it it like it works. We have a great like dynamic. So it like. I know not everybody's relationship is like that, so like mm-hmm. that's why I, like I'm I'm super blessed and, and grateful that I do have that relationship with my wife. Absolutely. Well, and it I'm, sounds like you put work yeah. into it though too. Exactly. You know, it, it hasn't been an accident. You guys are sitting down and having a plan. How many how many couples that are just you know a normal relationship could benefit for something like that too? Well, I, you know? I, yeah, I, I think the the biggest thing is you know the, the communication. There, you know, it's so key in in any relationship that you have, but even more so like. Like when, like for you and your spouse, like you, you gotta communicate, and and it, and some of those like conversations may may be hard to have, and like, yeah. listen, like we like you, we've worked, we've we've had to work at it, mm-hmm. like it it hasn't been like you know all sunshine and rainbows, like we, sure. we you know we have our ups and downs, but like the thing that holds us together and and, and brings us back to that great spot that like where we operate in. 95 percent of the time is is our communication Mm -hmm. like we i'm open with her she's open with me and and we want what's best for each other so like we 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 have that open line of communication and and i think that's big for any type of relationship absolutely and i mean i'm sure you've seen relationships crumble you know being around all the other athletes that you have been like i'm sure it's a a relatively normal-ish thing for athletes because they're gone you know like i said earlier nine months of the year you know that 
And I'm sure not all spouses are willing to set aside two months to come live with live with you. Yeah. You know, and, and and like I'm that's another like I'm I'm blessed and fortunate that like we're in a position where like we like we can do that. Because mm-hmm. like she would, you know, she would be able to teach some of her clients like through FaceTime and sure. and whatnot with the Pilates and, and stuff. But like, you know, some couples don't have that that luxury to to be able to just pick up and, and go live with their spouse for for two months right you know a month and a half two months like i'm i'm very very grateful that that we have the dynamic that we do and and she makes it easy for me to be able to just go you know play the game that i love to play yeah. I, I love that. that's dude. awesome i man. love it yeah that's dude I, I it's so cool i, I was telling somebody else because i was talking to a patient of mine who she was essentially she was the same way it sounds like your wife is she was like he has so much to give like the way she talks about her husband is unbelievable and it's, I, I think that is massive for men because you were talking about the emotional side of men. It, that's discounted a lot for men yeah. that, we, that we think we're just rocks, like stoic rocks all the time. And that's not the case. And if, if a woman is backing you up like that, it's massive. If, the, if she has support, if she respects you. I mean, that you could go, you could go move mountains if you need to. Yeah. I, it's, it's so powerful, like yeah. you're saying. And like, it's like, I tell her all the time, like, she, like, she should, like, you know, talk about this more like because like a lot of women would be able to like benefit Mm -hmm. from sure from this like from her dynamic and the way that like her mindset and the way she she approaches it and but i think it comes with just experience like like being in the in the professional sports world for 20 plus years like Mm -hmm. she has seen absolutely everything yeah right and and she she took pieces that she wanted to like bring into her personal side to like make her better and she saw the stuff that didn't work so like mm-hmm. she threw that out and like and but then i think it all comes back to like communication like this is what i want this is what i expect and like can can you give me that right and like i'm going to do absolutely everything i can in my power to give her what she wants and mm-hmm. and in the respect that she deserves and like that i uh, vice versa like yeah so I, I think it's 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 a two-way battle like i don't you hear so many times with like the the relationship side, it's fifty fifty. No, like she's giving a hundred percent, I'm giving a hundred percent. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Like, so good. And 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 that's the way it should be because right. there's going to be ups and downs through any relationship. Hundred percent. If this person's only giving fifty percent and you're only giving fifty percent, like it's not going to work. You're missing out on a hundred percent of work there, right? You yeah. know, so like, like, I, yeah, like yeah, I would yeah, rather dude. be able to dive all in with everything that I can give and everything that she can give, and just communicate about it, right? Keep the things that work, you know. Let's talk about what we can work on, what what can be better, mm-hmm. and and go from there. I, I, that's a dynamic that 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 helps us work the way that that we do. Yeah, Love I it. think that's phenomenal stuff. Dude, yeah, you guys, you do not have to be a professional athlete to pay attention to that advice. Right? <laughs> yeah, that I mean was that was so, money. Yeah, that was money, yeah. dude. Um, all right, moving right along here. So, you've uh, you've had the opportunity to play along some of the game's biggest stars. You know, the Bryce Harpers, Juan Soto's, Freddie Freeman. Acuna, guys like that. Uh, I'm sure there's plenty I'm missing, but what would you say really separates those guys that are, you know, at the top of the game? You know, what what separates them? Other than obviously having probably more talent than other players, you know, in certain aspects, but yeah. I I think one their their work ethic mm-hmm. because they don't get that like obviously the, some of the talent's god-given, but sure. absolutely. The best of the best they're in there, you know, busting their butt, yeah. getting after it, you know, not settling for you know this is good enough they mm-hmm. they always think they can be better sure and then their i think their mindset yeah the ability to not forget i don't i don't think forgets the right word but you know when something doesn't go their way mm-hmm. it seems like it doesn't even phase them mm-hmm. like like i see it cuz i'm in the dugout with them of course. and and you know the camera doesn't follow them down into the tunnel to like let out what they need to let out mm-hmm. but like from a fan's perspective just watching like the best of the best like y- yeah you'll see them occasionally like five six second clip of them getting upset mm-hmm. but the camera pans right back to him in the in the you know the next 10 seconds right it's like that that instant just never on. even happened so i think wow if i had to say like if i had to pick one thing i think it's their ability to like really you know let go of you know the negative result or something didn't go right their way and, and, and be able to make that adjustment the next second mm-hmm. instead of 
the next game or you know two games from now like sure. it's the ability to like let go of the negative result and get back into that you know that mindset of like trusting themselves in an instant yeah you know it's i was kind of hoping you would say something along those lines because my point in asking that is you don't have to be one of those four names i just mentioned you don't have to be the mike trouts aaron judges because i see that in you you know and we see that with jeff who we Absolutely. are close with you know yeah. who's also a professional athlete so the the biggest reason i wanted to ask that is because with my players you know i coach a 13u team the biggest thing that holds them back is they hold on to things for so long and it's so difficult to get them to kind of let those things go you know learn from them yeah. of course you know if you make a mistake or or you know you fail in a certain instance on the field because that's how they think and that, nothing wrong with that right they're 13 years old you know yeah. but yeah. <laughs> but what would you say and we'll kind of get into this later too i guess but as a coach how can i help them move on from things better Damn, that's a great question. Dude, I know, I'm sitting <laughs> there like, really damn, good. <laughs> my goodness. That's a great question. I I would say, like, I'm, I'm trying to think back to, like, like the good coaches that I've had in my life and, mm -hmm. and the ability of, like, and the impact that they've had. Not mm -hmm. even the ability, the impact that they've had mm -hmm. whenever something didn't go my way. I'm trying to think, like, what they did to really get me back on track and, and pump me up and, and so I was ready to go out there for that next mm -hmm. to batter, or, you know, throw this next pitch and, mm -hmm. and and get locked back in. I think I think the the ability to put like as a coach, like mm -hmm. if if one of your kids isn't doing what you're asking them to do, the ability to put like the anger and the frustration mm -hmm. aside and to like give them some kind of positive reinforcement to mm -hmm. like let them know, okay, this didn't go your way, but you know, keep trying. You know, you'll mm -hmm. get it this next time. Like, so I, especially at that age, like you know, twelve, thirteen. Like, we're so we're, like the world is so good now of like you know, beating people down and, oh, yeah. and and making them feel like you know that's where you have to live. You yeah. know, you're not good enough. You're right. never going to be good enough to succeed. Like, in in you know, as a coach, in an essence, you're their role model. So you have to you have to kind of put that frustration and and anger aside of like them not doing something that you're wanting them to do, and to be able to like you know pat them on the back and be like, okay, Johnny, it's gonna be okay. You're gonna get them next time. Right. Like that goes a long, mm -hmm. long way. And I think too, like something I've noticed in good coaches, um, you know, whether it's Ringo who you're you're hitting with and whatnot, like. It's also the ability to, from a coach's perspective, be quick on your feet in the sense of, okay, he is not understanding this way that I'm trying to explain, you know, what's going on with his swing or in his in his uh, wind up or or whatever it is. So I think it's also being able to make adjustments yourself and explain things in a way that maybe they'll understand better. You know, there's we've all had coaches, regardless of the sport, where. One coach is saying something and you're just it just makes no sense. Right. You're just not getting Absolutely. it. Absolutely. And then your other coach over here says basically the same thing, but changes it just a little bit, and you're like, "Oh, damn!" And it clicks. That's exactly that's why. Yes. You know, I what I tell some of my dads on of the kids on my team, I tell them it's like, "Listen, we were all young sons at one point. <laughs> at a at a certain point in a in a son's life, dad's voice no longer means anything." You might be right. There's a good chance you're right. Yes. You know, there's also a chance you're wrong. Yeah. And some of you need to accept that. But there is a chance you're right. But he doesn't want to hear it from dad. So I could go up to him and verbatim say the same sentence. And I'm like, oh, that makes sense. Because Coach Jake said, da, 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 you know. And so obviously that goes into it as well. But I, I do think like the encouragement, you know, like repeated opportunities, yeah. you know, and sometimes you got to throw them in. You gotta throw them into a difficult situation. Well, and that's what I was just—I was gonna say that too, because like, like I'm learning. Like, I always want to be a student of the game, mm -hmm. whether I'm, you know, I'm still playing, and this is year fifteen for me coming mm -hmm. up. I still want to learn. Yeah, I never want to come across as the guy that you know. Yeah, I got this all figured out. Like, yeah. you know, I'm ready to go hit six hundred in the big leagues. That's yeah, just right. ain't gonna happen. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I think like. To your point, like I, th I think that's a great point to make. Mm -hmm. Like you, you gotta, you gotta challenge yourself. Yeah. And and as kids, like they're you're, they're not gonna learn. And mm -hmm. and even even as a thirty five year old who's 
preparing for his 15th professional season like mm-hmm. casual i'm gonna get <laughs> i'm gonna get better if i challenge myself exactly and that's what yeah. we do on the, that's what we're doing on the velo machine yeah. right now like Sheila. the other day it was a bitch. it was set up to <laughs> i think it was equivalent to like if the mound was at the right distance it was 106 mile an hour yeah. coming out of there which is and crazy <laughs> and, and you guys named her sheila that's of course it's yeah. this guy right oh here. yeah but, but it was I, the first but name that came to, to mind your, to your point like you like no matter the like obviously like seven eight year old you're you're not going to throw those <laughs> you know youngsters in sure and challenge them right, right away because they're going to run away and not want to be able 100%. to play baseball yeah. the rest of their life. They're going to end up being soccer players. <laughs> <laughs> and that's a whole other topic. <laughs> so no, I respect, I respect every actor. <laughs> um, but I, I think, like, if, you know, you know, as a parent, you know, or an, a young athlete watching this this show, like, you know, you got to challenge yourself. Yeah. And, and you, you cannot be – especially – especially if it's not in a game setting because the result does not matter. Mm -hmm. Like it doesn't matter if you fail at this in practice. Yeah. Because it's practice. Exactly. So, so you might as well challenge yourself now and know what your body can do, Yep. mm -hmm. what you're capable of doing and how hard you want to work to try to do that task. Yeah. Right. So, So I think that's a great point of just, you know, don't be scared to challenge yourself yeah. because that's the only way you're going to learn exactly what you're capable of, mm-hmm. like the the level you're capable of reaching. Yeah. Well, and it's awesome. It's amazing you say that because that is, that is so important. And, and thankfully that is something like we have learned at a younger age now, you know, in our young twenties. And then as we're starting to get a little bit older now, but what I notice, whether it's yeah, yeah really, <laughs> damn, I know we're basically thirty, but <laughs> I don't want to hear a guess. <laughs> don't bring that bullshit up. <laughs> What I've noticed, so in the gym, you know, down at Legacy, I'm training anywhere from, like, literally eight years old, which is insane. And then we go all the way up to big leaguers, you know, and everything in between, mostly middle school and high school. That's the majority of our of our athletes. But what I notice is they are so scared to challenge themselves on their own. You know, they'll come up and they'll ask about, you know, should I use this weight for that? And I'm like, dude, go pick a weight. If it's too heavy, you can go down. But if it's too light, you need to go up. You need to be able to be like, okay, I'm too strong for this weight on this lift. Like, I need to challenge myself and go up to the next dumbbell or kettlebell or, you know, whatever it is. When it's in the cage, we're pumping 106 at you, you know? And, and like, that round this past Friday, like, you were frustrated after it. Yeah. You know, because it, it wasn't your best round. We all knew that. But then you start to think about it. It's like, okay, we were, like, 42 feet away. It was coming in at basically 106. Right. Mm. No one is is having a good round off that yeah. but you repeatedly put yourself in the box you repeatedly put yourself in a position to to basically see that and and get a feel for your swing there like that's a crazy situation to be in 106 like no one's throwing that no. you know there's a, there's a handful of guys that are close to that obviously yeah. but you're not seeing that so you want to talk about challenging yourself i mean that's what it looks like so right and it doesn't matter like i i mean we had the we had the numbers up for that round. I think mm-hmm. I may have gotten one hit in eight swings in that, exactly. that final round, mm. but it doesn't matter that I went one for eight because no one's gonna know. Right. But right. whoever was in the cage, like right. it's right. not gonna go on the back of my my baseball card. Exactly. Oh, he went one for eight off the velo <laughs> machine on December tenth. <laughs> not gonna happen. Hey, so right. I, I, Little do you know, Matt. Right. We're, 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 we're still at all, so we're we're putting that out there for this. <laughs> but I, but I, I think also the point I want to say too is like it doesn't like you don't have to be an athlete to challenge yourself. Exactly. Like a hundred percent, dude. It, no matter what profession you're in, whether mm-hmm. you're a high level CEO or if you're just getting started after college into the career that you want to be in challenge like yeah. you have to challenge yourself yep. to to be able to to attain you know the traits and the characteristics of a successful person you you're only going to get those by challenging yourself yeah. and mm-hmm. learning what you can do what you need to do better and and how and what that looks like yeah you have to challenge just yourself. always learning yeah, yeah. always i mean learning. look at a guy like yeah. andy again you know like we bring him up a lot but who who out there on the business side of things is setting a better example than that guy? Right, there's and, really not. And he'll tell you, you know? he'll tell you to your face how many times he failed before he succeeded. Exactly. And, yeah. and 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 not only him, but any entrepreneur or any athlete like mm-hmm. that reaches the high level, like they didn't do it their first time. Yeah. No, no. Like it it takes many many of 
of times failing. You mm-hmm. have to learn how to fail to become better. Yeah. yeah. And right. and I and I think that's I just kind of surprised yeah. myself with with spitting that out. <laughs> 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 well, but you have you have yeah. to be able to learn how to like because I've had like I've had mentors and I've had, you know, veteran players holidays, you know, mm-hmm. Carlos Beltran, mm-hmm. Yachty, um Chris Carpenter, those like the, the greats of the of the game, not yeah. only in Cardinal history, but the game mm-hmm. tell you that, you know, you you fail seven out of ten times, you're a Hall of Famer. Yeah. In in Which base, is insane. In, in baseball terms. Wild. Yeah. That's wild. Right? Yeah. Yeah. What other profession can you fail seven out of ten times and be considered one of the best? You, you can't. Right. You know, you can't. <laughs> so like you that that just shows that like you're gonna fail more times than you succeed. But it's the people that fail and they get tired of failing that just quit. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's the, you cannot you like you just can't quit. And and yeah. Andy says it. Any high level successful person is going to tell you that like the people th- that don't make it that don't make it past failing they just give up yeah they quit like you got to keep pushing yourself you got to keep chasing no matter how you know in in that next time after you fail you may fail again yeah but don't give up right just keep going dude Man, I love that's that money that's money so right good. there so fourth question here a little bit of the physical health question one. How has it been developing a relationship with First Form? We we talk about them all the time, how wonderful of a company they are, the morals, values they have, but also just the product and customer service they have. How has it been developed a relationship with them? And then also after that, what different changes and focuses have you made? We were talking a about it a little bit before with your physical health and fitness when it came to that as you got went along in your career. Yeah, I, you know, great questions as well. I, I think, you know, First Form, I, I got traded back here in 2018. Yeah. For the last month of the season and i'll never forget this i open up my instagram and and i got a message from andy for sale and i'm thinking holy shit like, <laughs> I, I, like i knew who he was yeah. i knew the name and like at, at that time i didn't know he was a big time sports fan yeah and i like at that time i didn't know his brother sal yeah and i didn't like i didn't know his story and and whatnot but like seeing that message and like how pumped he was that I would like, you know, I I played five years with the Cardinals before getting traded away, and then mm-hmm. that that same next like the next season, I get traded back for right. like the playoff push for the like the last month of the season. Mm-hmm. We ended up not making it by a game, but like the fact to be able to come back and put that Cardinals jersey on again and have one of the six like the most successful like St. Louis like business people like mm-hmm. reach out to me mm-hmm. and like how pumped he, like him and the company was that I, w- I was like, man, this is, this is somebody that like, I want to like, I want to get to know. Yeah. And then like, just, you know, I, they, I, the video of like the back turf, the, mm-hmm. the black turf back yeah. in the warehouse. I saw one time when I was, and I'm like, I was like, babe, I'm just going to take a chance and I'm going to reach out to him and, and just be like, hey, is there any way that, like, you know, we're looking for, like, a, a turf area to do our, like, off-season agility, mm-hmm. like, program? Is there, like, is there any way, you know, we could come check this out and see if this works? He's like, yeah, absolutely. Came in, <laughs> like, took us back there, showed us the space, and, like, basically treat us like we were, like, part of the company. Yeah, like family. And, like, yeah. blown away by, like like, how, like, open – they were to like just mm-hmm. you know at that time we were strangers like sure s- let somebody come in and, and you know get their off season work in so like it, it's been it's been amazing to, like what they've like what they've done for like me like being able to like open up that the massive facility that yeah. they have oh, like gosh. the training facility HQ there is insane to like, right to be able to go in there and get my off season like training done but also it's the the vibe that they have built there and like when you walk into that building like there's some days where i'm like one of only two people working out in that gym mm-hmm. at at that time and the vibe is still like like just electric electric yeah. and you're like you're energized and yeah. like you you feel like a positivity about it so mm-hmm. like what they've done like what they've built like it's it's like second to none yeah. like they it, like i commend them with like every ounce of my body that they've they've done a great job and and they've done such a good job of like like making it known that like we want to be america's like brand yeah and and that that is great in itself Mm -hmm. but like 
what they're doing like with the ath- like the athlete side of it where mm-hmm. they're opening up HQ more to like athletes to come in mm-hmm. and be able to train there like I think is is commend like yeah. it's it's amazing what yeah. they've done and you know the second question is like we've like you said we touched on it but you know I'm I'm 35 now like I made the change back in 2016 where I lost 40 pounds and you know, I think it was 12 and a half 13 percent body fat in three months wow. time yeah which is crazy at that, fast. W- at that weight that's insane yeah, yeah, yeah 12 13 percent yeah, yeah. <clears throat> excuse me and like like to look back like i'm kicking myself because i wish i would have done it sooner sure but that's that's in the past and like i'm not mm-hmm. going to live in the past but um it's just each year like like my wife surprises me because like she's like i told you guys she's the one that handles my whole program she's a cscs she owns her own you know applies for pros applies business she has a few mentors that she reaches out to 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 touch base with the nutrition side of it Mm -hmm. she has you know she her alone is great with the mindset of you know training at a high level and and getting your mindset ready to perform at a high level but Mm -hmm. she has a handful of people that she coaches that she's used herself that she's put me in contact with as well so like that like each year we sit down and we talk about what like what the offseason program is going to look like mm-hmm. and to have somebody like that on my team let alone living in the same house yeah, as me, right <laughs> um, <laughs> that i trust and yeah. and is so smart and has seen it all through like her experience of working with professional athletes like i'm blessed to, yeah. to be able to like no and 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 i think that's that's the biggest part too is like having like faith and like confidence in your training program absolutely like, like you're gonna get more out of it if, if you believe in what yeah. you're doing if you and, buy and in, you guys know more absolutely. so than 100 than anybody with that so like she's done such a great job of like and, and, it, and it comes back to the communication side of it like mm-hmm. she'll she'll write me a workout and if like if my body if i feel like my body is not going to do this one move properly I'll go to her and she she already has four different exercises yeah. that's going to hit yep. the same right. muscle group that may not put my body in in like a strenuous position sure. mm-hmm. yeah with like ri- like injury risk yeah so like having somebody like that, that that I trust and just know that whatever I get is is right for my body mm-hmm. has made such such a big big difference yeah no, that's massive. And and then on the coaching side of that, too, like those of you that are trainers or coaches, like that's why it's so important to have the ability like, OK, you know that this movement, this is not going to this is going to put your body in a compromised situation potentially. So you got to be able to know your client and be like, OK, if he doesn't want to do this one, I do have three or four other ones that are going to do the exact same for his body. But you're going to feel more confident mentally. Like, yep. OK, I'm not hurting myself here, you know, but having the ability to to know your client know their body and um you know be able to make those adjustments you know that's very very important yeah and and i think that's not only like from a professional athlete mm-hmm. standpoint but like you know the guys that you train at, at legacy mm-hmm. like starting to to know that like understand that concept at at that age yes. is only going to benefit them and put them in a in s- such a better position to succeed moving forward absolutely absolutely you know and it, it also it also shows them the value of hard work you know it's hard work to to get to know the body to get to know how to train people how to coach people whether it's a sport or in the gym or you know coaching uh business growth or something like that you know like it takes work to know those things to then be able to teach it too so it it also shows them the value of hard work on that end of it you know so it's uh no, I, I think that's huge for you having that in house and whatnot. I mean, that's well, it's massive. and I think like to touch on your point real quick. I think it, I think it matters to like, not matters. I think it's huge that like if you have a coach, like, say one of your kids, mm-hmm. you know, trust like trust you with the workout that you're yes. giving them, but then they see you doing the same thing mm-hmm. and and training your body, even though you're not playing the sport that they're right. training to prepare but you lead by example. Yes. So like mm, that is powerful in itself. Mm-hmm. And 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 I think 
I think it just you go you got to find you got to find those groups of people that like you you know you you look up to you, you trust you know you follow you know you wherever they get their content from I'm I'm speaking from like a young kid's sure. perspective who they look up to who they you know who their role model is and and all that like but like know that like if you lead by example and if you like are doing what you're telling your kids to do mm-hmm. or like your clients to do like it's going to have way more of an impact than if you're telling them one thing and then you're off doing, doing something, something different Absolutely. right right we we've talked about this quite a bit you know that that is where the best coaches become the best coaches is being able to set that example and and not necessarily like you don't have to be able to i, I do take pride in the fact that i can still play catch and and swing a bat and field ground balls and things like that but you don't have to be able to do those specific things but like the biggest thing that bothers me with personal trainers or strength coaches is if they're out of shape. Yeah. It's mm. like, what, how do you expect people to one, give you money? Yeah. You know, to train them. Right. And, and second, like, how do you expect them to trust that you know what you're talking about when you don't look anywhere near the park? You know, that's the biggest thing that, that frustrates me um, as far as like physical coaching and stuff like that goes. But, well, I think what's important too, you were talking about how, you know, you used to be doing, you know, barbell squats, all the, all the stuff. And there's nothing wrong with those moves. You were maxing out the weight essentially yeah. early on. And you also changed that stuff to more rotational stuff with landmines and whatnot, maybe even kettlebell work, maybe even dumbbell work alone. And I think that's an important thing too to recognize as a trainer, coach, whatever, to adjust those different needs to the client slash the athlete, whatever it is. Mm-hmm. Because you don't – like, dude – you don't need to be doing 500 pound squats right now. Right. Like that's not part of your goals. Right. You know what I mean? As a performance athlete. So I think it's very important to find a coach trainer. If you're an athlete and if you're a trainer coach, be learning always so you can adapt to those needs for any client. doesn't matter if gen pop, doesn't matter if the athlete, whatever. Yeah. And, and uh, you know, I'm, I hate to, you know, keep bringing my wife up to this, but like she does such a good job of like programming, like, yeah breaking it down at the at the start of my off season like well you know phase one will be three weeks long and then we move into phase two and that's you know four to six weeks long but like i'm only moving like heavy heavy weight like for maybe three weeks yeah and And it's important to do that stimulus yeah right and and Mm -hmm. you know and when i was younger that you know maybe that three week span was you know four to five weeks but I know that, like, I know I've I've got to a point in my life and in my career where I know what my body likes and what it doesn't like, which I think is is good for for anybody, yeah. not only an athlete, but like just anybody who's on the fitness you know journey. Mm-hmm. And and I think it's big to like you know, I I hate to use you know the deload word like when I'm at first form because I I got the other day I was you know. It was, right after thanksgiving and i was coming off of like a deload week of like a program yeah. deload week uh-huh. and andy's dad jim was like what the hell is that <laughs> <laughs> so like i understand that, like you know like those like like that like you got to be like careful like that, what like, is he 75 78 yeah, or something like that's where yeah, yeah, yeah and he runs every day yes. and like he's in great he's shape funny too. yeah and yeah. It, he's hilarious what is that but, like, soft shit yeah he's like, oh, we, don't, we didn't know what deloads were in, in my day <laughs> But like okay, just, Jim. Right. Like, yeah. Damn it, Jim. <laughs> but uh, just like having, you know, that takes like if I if I have my program down and, and I have it on my phone, so I know like when when one phase of the program is ending and, mm-hmm. and what my next phase is looking like, it takes the thinking out of it for me. Yeah. And like I'm big. Like if I like with with my nutrition, with my workouts, with like that's why I like to like hit at the same time. Like every mm-hmm. like. Because it, it takes my thinking out of it. Yeah, like, and it's routine. You said you're a big I'm, routine I'm a guy. Big routine. Yeah, and, and I hate change. Yeah, and like it, change is something that like I will battle like <laughs> for the rest of my life. Yeah, if something changes like that's gonna set me off. Yeah, and I got to use the you know the the mental cues to like get myself sure. back on track to sure. like not let my whole day Just be, be derailed by yep. one small change. So like, but I like you said like whether you're, you know, an athlete looking for a trainer or mm-hmm. coach or if you're a trainer or coach wanting to like still learn like I think it's it's big to like you know like programming has been huge for me in, mm-hmm. in understanding what my body likes when my body likes 
a certain you know training phase mm-hmm. and and like we're getting ready to move into like the sports specific training which takes me up to like before i leave like right before the season like for mm-hmm. spring training so like it's it's huge like whenever i know like you know i, I just don't have to think about a yeah. lot of stuff yeah it, it softens the blow of the change in the program yeah. whenever yeah, you have it. it it does yeah. exactly yeah. yeah so kind of final question here final big one anyway so we've talked a little bit about you know actually quite a bit about the younger younger crowd and whatnot what mm-hmm. what would be your number one piece of advice you would give to younger players wanting to get to the next level whether that's you know making the high school team or high school trying to get to college college trying to get to pro ball you know things like that what is the number one piece of advice you would give and what do you think is the top character skill that you think that they should possess for to be the best teammate yeah. sorry for as a teammate dang you guys are <laughs> you didn't know you're, you didn't know you're gonna be tested today no. huh? <laughs> he's like i'm these getting are, grilled these are, what the great, hell? These are great <laughs> questions but i mean it, it, it's a testament to you guys of like the content that you guys want to put out well thank you thank you yeah, so yeah. thank it's you it's great and um the the one piece of advice i give a younger player no matter you know what team they're trying to make is everybody's so quick to tell you that you're not gonna make it mm-hmm. you can't make yeah. it yeah and like yeah. i grew up like I'm I'm a I'm a huge test of that because my whole life being from where I'm from and everybody hating on you know oh you're not that's not a real dream to have is to to make it to the major leagues and I'm like right. well who are you to tell me that that's not my dream right. I I know that that's inside of me that that's what I want to do so I'm going to do everything I can to do it yeah so the one piece of advice for younger players is is you know don't let the you know the the negative people hold you back. Yeah. You know, if somebody tells you you can't do it, go out there and, and work harder and, and prove to them that yes, you can do it. Mm-hmm. And, and and you're not gonna derail me from from chasing my dream. Right. Right. I'm all about that. I'm all about that. It, it, it's it's interesting because I remember after like seven or eight years old, you know, you'd hear, you know, follow your dreams before that. Mm-hmm. After that point, I know exactly what you're talking about. I would I would hear, I mean, we're not we're not going to the NHL here. You know, we're we're not we're not going pro here. Yeah. You know, we're not we're not going to the show. Like, there's no way. And it, it's interesting because I I wish, and I pray that more parents would encourage that type of stuff because even if you chase it and don't make it, the lessons you learn from going that hard at your sport will then translate over to everything else. Absolutely, mm-hmm. and and you'll like, be able to look back and you won't you won't have any regrets. Right. Of exactly. the path that, of the path that you chose to take. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And like. I had a, I think it was a third or a fourth grade teacher gave us a, a project to do in, in my project I made into a Wheaties box and yeah. put pictures of me and little league all over this Wheaties box. Oh yeah. That's awesome. And, I, and <laughs> like we had to write, like you had to create like this project and then oh. you had to write a paragraph explaining the project and mm. I, and I handed it in and I got it back with a note saying, well, that's not a realistic dream for you. Oh my. And At I'm like third grade, third or fourth grade. Yeah, I mean, you're what eight, nine years old, something like that. I guess. Yeah, I mean, that's and ridiculous. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> I'm like, why? Like, but that's to your point. Like, it's once that seven you, or eight year old. Yep. Yeah, and, and then, then poof, once you get yeah. after that, you're that like, everybody mm. is so quick to shoot shoot whatever dreams you have down. Right. It, disgust, it disgusts me. To be yeah, and it's yeah. it's it's not cool. But I like, I would just say like, you know, let that, you know, if if somebody's if tells you know a younger player oh, you're not good enough to make it, let that go in one ear out the other ear and mm-hmm. keep keep busting your butt to put yourself in the best possible position yeah. you can can put yourself in. Yeah. Maybe you yeah. save that for a little bit of extra energy too. I mean, I knew that like, like okay. I like, you yeah. know, high school like you know, there were there were players that like I I obviously had better numbers in in my high school career. Mm-hmm. One guy got drafted in the first round like that like we played against like other people went to major D1 schools and mm-hmm. like I got my scholarship pulled from the University of Pitt mm. because they recruited somebody else that they brought in that thought they were going to be better than me, and they they called me back and said my test scores weren't, you know, where they needed them to be, and whatnot, and they pulled the scholarship. And like, if I would have stopped there, like, I would have. You wouldn't be big I city. No, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Like, so like, I, I just think like written off that rap sheet. Yeah, no, no kidding. Exactly. Four stolen uh, bases, man. Yeah, right? I know, right? <laughs> uh, that's going to go down as the biggest, biggest accolade that I got. <laughs> but I, I think like, 
and and this this moves right into the you know the second part of it is you know what what makes a great teammate and I like like I've been told that you know I've I'm a pretty solid teammate and like that's the reputation that I have around the league and 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 whatnot and I think it's you know your willingness to show up to win mm-hmm. because like at our level in the game it's all about winning yeah and and you know we do it for one one goal and that's to be able to hold that World Series trophy up at the end of the season and you know care about the team take mm-hmm. take yourself out of it do. Do whatever you can without sacrificing yourself. Mm-hmm. Do whatever you can to, to always be learning, to always, you know, show the coaching staff and your teammates and, you know, the owners and the GM that are watching day in and day out that you care about the organization that you're a part of. Mm-hmm. And you're proud of it, too. And, and you you're know? proud to be Especially able to somewhere put that. here. Like, exactly. You know that. Exactly. I mean, it, this city is the Cardinals. You know? Exactly. And... <clears throat> And then just, you know, be aware of, you know, I, I always hated, you know, the, the guys that would be, you know, in the cage for 40 minutes and not, like, letting everybody else come in and get there. So, like, for me, like, I had I had great, you know, veteran players that kind of took me under their wing whenever I was a rookie. And, you know, the rookie showed up an hour before everybody else and got their work in. So that way the guys that were in the starting lineup or the veteran players showed up, they didn't have to wait. Yeah. They could come in, get in the gym, get their workout in, and then go straight to the cage, get their workout like before we went out on the field for BP. Mm-hmm. So like just like being like selfless and yeah. like like putting others first. I think that's a big characteristic to like like being a, a, a good teammate. Yeah. Yeah. No, I love I, that. I, that's I love that. Yeah. Yeah. So before we get into the Q and A real quick. I'll, I'll ask a couple more uh, fan fan type questions because I know we'll have some listeners that want to hear these things. So, one, talk about the World Series win. I mean, what what does that feel like? Winning the World Series, hoisting that trophy. You know, what is that? And then after that, I want you to go through the 2014 at bat off of Kershaw. Kershaw you, you know exactly what I'm talking <laughs> yeah. about. Yep. But uh, but but first, like you said, it's all about winning at that level. You know, well you've got you've had the opportunity to win the last game of the year. Yeah. You know, and there's not many guys I get to. There's there's even less or there's not a huge percentage of baseball players that make it to the big leagues. And there's even less I get to hold that trophy and put a ring on their finger. You're one of those. What's that feel like? <laughs> it it feels like it's not like it's not even real. Yeah. Like that when that last out's recorded, like I'll I'll take you through. So there was three of us. We which that whole like World Series was was not like realistic because mm-hmm. nobody won a, a home game everybody all the games were won on the oh, road you're right we uh, won yeah. we won games one and two in houston uh-huh. beat cole and verlander which insane unheard of yeah i mean two of the and greatest we, ever like, <laughs> and we left we left houston like pumped up we're like we're going back home like we're, we got a two nothing lead yeah. like we're, like we're digging ourselves yeah. right yeah. and then we go in and get our asses <laughs> kicked for three straight games at home <laughs> And then we're like, and then the emotions are completely different. Like mm-hmm. we're like, we know, like, uh, we, like we weren't like ready to give up, but like we knew, like we had our work cut out. Sure. And it was back to facing, like you know, their studs. Mm-hmm. You and guys would have had Scherzer, Scherzer, and Strasburg, Strasburg and like okay. Corbin came out of the bullpen. Oh, that's right. Yeah, like yeah, we, yeah. Like yep. we, like we were set up. Just they were set up as well. So like we knew yeah. that it was going to be a battle. Right. And. But game seven, like game six, we won, and it, like we're like, oh, dude, like it all comes down yeah. to like tomorrow. Like yeah. tomorrow's it. Like win or lose, like the season's over. Mm-hmm. And like the game's going along, going along, and like, like at that time, I was like a like a bench bat. So like any time, like the situation, like kind of like I could follow the game along and like knew like you know my name may get called for this situation based on like who we had coming up in the lineup. Mm-hmm who was out on the mountains, like, I was up in the cage. And, like, the cage in Minute Maid is up by the dugout, so you have to walk down, like, a couple flights of stairs to get to the dugout Okay. on field level. So, like, there was me, um, Gerardo Parra, okay. and then our BP pitcher were up in the cage, like, getting re- – like, we two were our two there. lefty bats. Sure. Like, we were getting mm-hmm. warmed up, ready to go in case, like, our name got called. And then uh, we, we hear the – like, the – we heard a lot of booing 
and like the TVs, like because of the whole like, like since the whole cheating stuff and all that, the like TVs mm-hmm. in the clubhouse and in the cages were delayed. Oh, okay. So we were like, we heard the noise before, like we saw on TV what happened, and then like we we heard our because the the cage walkway walked right out to our dugout, the visiting okay. dugout, and we heard our dugout going crazy. So we knew that something good had to have happened. We yeah. didn't know what. And then we saw on TV how he hit the homer that hit off the foul pole yeah. like to give us like a, a 3-2 lead, I think. Okay, yeah. Was that Soto? Was that the was no. that the one he carried the bat down to? No, no, no. This no? is uh, Howie Kendrick hit it off Will Harris, oh, their closer, yes. to like basically win, Opposite way, right? win the World Series. Yeah, yes, Oppo. 100%. Yeah, yeah. And that whole postseason, Will Harris was like unhittable. He yeah. had a cutter, like a nasty cutter that like just – was not a, a a pitch that as a hitter you wanted to hit. Sure. And how he like right on right, cut her down in a way, and how like how he was just like on one that whole post. He's the <laughs> one that took Joe Kelly deep in Dodger yeah. Stadium, like Grand Slam, like right? like sent us to the next round, and then like here he is, Game Seven, like hitting a, a homer off the closer, off the foul, like yeah. oppo foul pole. Yeah. And we're freaking going nuts. For those then, of you that aren't baseball people, like that is extremely rare. Extremely yeah, rare. Extremely <laughs> rare. And like, you know, we made it down like in time, like to see him like touch third base and like touch home plate and then like celebrate with him in the dugout. And like, but we knew like they had like their lineup was like, we knew we had three outs like that we, and we were only up by like one run, I think. Yeah. And we're sitting down and we're like, an- like it's anxious. Dude, sure. Like you need three outs to like to be World Series champions. Like like every kid dreams of like, you know, backyard like bottom of the ninth, bases loaded, sure. three two count, two outs, and you like win it. Mm-hmm. Well, how he basically did that for us like on the road, and now we just need to get like three outs. So mm-hmm. like two outs, like I don't think anybody on, and like Daniel Hudson got to two strikes on on Michael Brantley, and like. I can picture it now. Like, it just seems like his, like, the pitch that he struck him out on was, like, going in slow motion. We're like, yeah. please just, like, let it be it. <laughs> Threw a, a nasty slider, like, back foot slider, like, swing and miss. And, like, just seeing those guys, like, running out on the field, like, from the dugout and seeing everybody, like, you know, our outfielders come running in from center field and everybody, like, we're celebrating on the mound in Houston and we're World Series champions. Yeah. And it's just like, like I get the chills. Like, I'm getting chills, dude. Like, this is crazy. <laughs> like, you, like, that's what dream, like, dreams are made of, like, when you're, like, younger kids, like, mm-hmm. being able to, like, hoist that trophy up. And, like, then they, you know, you're watching them set up the stage to do, like, the announcement with, like, our owners and the MVP announcement. They pull a Corvette on the, on the field, like, <laughs> for, like, Strasburg was the World Series MVP. Got a brand new, like, Z06 Corvette. Oh. Like, <laughs> like just sh- like shit that you wouldn't like expect like yeah. to be yeah. a part of yeah and like and then like the best was like we went back home went back to the hotel in houston we stayed the night in houston after we won and then we're flying back the next day and for the two hour plane ride from houston back to dc all we play and like i don't i wish i had i got the video from my wife before i came here but like we sung "We Are the Champions" for the whole <laughs> way home. They, we had speakers blasting. Like, it was just like it, like it was just an awesome, awesome feeling. Yeah, to like to be able to like call yourself like you know I'm a World Series champion. Yeah, like that's freaking. You're in history. Freaking awesome. You know, like yeah. it's that's awesome, dude. Yeah. That is that is cool. That that's a that's a sweet story. Like that's cool to hear it. The home run. Yeah, talk about that. <laughs> Probably. I mean, probably what you're most well known for, at least in a cardinal uniform. Oh, that without like, a that doubt, put me on the map. Hundred percent. Like, I, I mean, like I had, I had good, like I had a good career in the minor leagues to, to you know, be able to have the opportunity to make my major league debut. Mm-hmm. Excuse me. Thirteen, I was a rookie. Played a lot. Yeah. Went to the World Series as a rookie, starting in Fenway. Yeah. For the World Series. Big Poppy's standing up. I'm thinking, well, how the hell am I going to catch this ball if he hits <laughs> hits one to me? Like just like like surreal stuff. Like yeah. like you like where I'm from. Like like stuff like this does not happen to people like from where I'm from. Sure. So I'm like kicking myself each like each moment of of like my career. And then like 
you know, fast forward to 2014 playoffs, um, we're down 2 nothing, bottom of the seventh. I think Peralta and Johnny Peralta and Matt Holliday got on base, so like mm -hmm. two two people on. I think it was a 1-0 pitch. May have, I may even have two strikes. I'm not sure of the count. But I saw, like, he's he's known for, like, having a very, very tough curveball. Mm -hmm. Like, I, he's a great pitcher regardless. Sure. But, like, his curveball was, like, electric. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I saw that thing pop, like, above my head. And, like, it, it has so much break that, like, you know that, like, for it to be a strike and for a pitch that, like, you want to swing at, it's got to start high. Mm -hmm. So I saw that thing pop, and I'm like, this is what I'm going after. And I made contact, and, like, I mean, the video – speaks for itself like i i thought i you know hit it out like yeah. no doubter my hands instantly go up like i'm standing at home plate mm -hmm. and then i'm like oh shit like <laughs> that's not a no doubter <laughs> i see i see kemp matt kemp running back yeah like he's got a beat on it like mm -hmm. he's chasing it pretty good and then like you see me like in the video like i pick up my speed a little bit and then i see it like go over like he didn't catch it i saw it land in the bullpen and then like and then that's whenever i like i'm just jumping chaos. down yeah i'm yeah. jumping i don't know if, like in the video you can see like my first base coach had to like push me like towards the base you like, almost to missed make the sure, base yeah to <laughs> make sure that i like didn't didn't forget to touch first base but uh just like rounding the bases like that Bush Stadium, packed house, like mm -hmm. waving the white, white rally towels. Mm -hmm. I felt like I did, I wasn't even touching like the dirt as I was rounding the bases. Like I, I was like, like my heart was racing. Like it felt like it was coming out of my chest. Like it just, yeah. like, what the hell did I just do? <laughs> <laughs> and then like being able to like see, you know, touch third base, give you know a kendo a, a high five, uh, our third base coach, and then like mm -hmm. look up and see like my teammates standing at home plate, like realizing that like I just put our team ahead. I just did like, that. Yeah. Yeah. Against a very, very tough team. And and we were up two to one in the series. So like mm -hmm. if we would have lost that game, we would have had to go back to Dodger Stadium yeah. for game five. And in mm -hmm. Dodger Stadium in game five is not an environment that you want to be in <laughs> as a visitor. I'm sure. I'm sure. And like it's just like like gave the curtain call, like all that. Like and then I, I was like, man, like we still have like we have six outs to get. Yeah, so we like, still got I, a game to like, win. I had to go down in like the batting cage in, in Bush Stadium is right like down the steps from the dugout. Like mm -hmm. I had to go down and lay down in the batting cage and like get my shit together and, and like decompress a bit. Like Ooh, take some deep breaths, like like <laughs> collect my like collect myself because mm -hmm. like we had to go out and, and play defense for two more yeah. innings and like we're like we're only up one run. Like right. I've got to be locked in for these right. six outs. Like you know, to to be able to like to punch the ticket to move on to the next next round. It's like it like it was like a whirlwind of emotions. Like super pumped. Like yeah, hell yeah. Like I just did that. But then like real fast, knowing that like okay, like I felt that, but like I gotta let that go and I gotta get myself back to mm -hmm. like being locked in for mm -hmm. for probably another thirty minutes to an hour. Exactly. To like, to like close this thing out. Yeah, because that was pre uh, pre pitch clock. So. And the playoff game oh, yeah. for long, yeah, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so it was, uh, yeah. it was, it was cool. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't change it for the, for anything. That I mean, that's like I said, like that put me on the map, and like that's kind of like what I'm known for, and mm -hmm. and whatnot, and like I'm just kind of been like grateful and blessed to be able to have some of those moments, like in yeah. like in my baseball career, and like looking looking to add to that, you know, the yeah. memories list of, of that in the upcoming seasons and whatnot, but like. You know, it's it's always cool. Like that's one video that I I always pull up. Like if I'm in like kind of a little slump, like down area, like the season, like that's one video that I'll I'll always pull up and mm -hmm. kind of watch and like get me pumped up to yeah. to get back and out, make and, a smile, and know go that, back like, to the I wins a little it. bit. Yeah, yeah. Go back to yeah. the win counter. Yeah. yeah. No, that's cool. I appreciate you talking about those. I'm sure you get asked about those all the time, and you know the those are just the cool moments. You know, yeah. you have you have your perspective, and then us fans like we have our perspective on it too you know i still i was telling these guys earlier i was like i remember watching that home run yeah. like i remember myself at home and it's just like i don't know it's cool it's cool I, we and like we live in in clayton so like we were out on a walk last week like walking our dogs and mm -hmm. like some dude was walking his dog and stopped he's like hey man like thanks for everything that you've done for the cardinals like what like what's your plans 
said, I'm a free agent. I want to keep playing. He goes, well, he goes, I'll have my people talk to your people and try to get you back to the cart. Like, just like a, yeah, like yeah, a St. Yeah, Louis yeah, Cardinal yeah, sure, sure, guy, yeah, yeah. like fan. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. But like, like being able to know that I, I had like, I had some impact on like, you know, the fan yeah. base and the community in the St. Mm-hmm. Louis area to where like, you know, people feel comfortable enough. Like they see me out in public, like, and they're not jerks about it. Like, like I sure. love it. Like I'll, I'll go to Straub's or whatnot. And like, mm-hmm. I'll get patted on the back and be like, Hey, thanks for everything that you've done for the card. Like, I, like, I think that's cool. Like I yeah. never yeah. expected that I would, I would be in a position to like, like, like for some families, like that's what they like, like diehard baseball fans, like, especially in like, that's what they talk about, like a hundred percent at holidays or whatnot. And like for like somebody to be able to be like, hey, like I talked to Matt Adams today, the guy that hit the homer off Kershaw back in two thousand fourteen. Like yeah. I always want to be like a like a an outstanding like person to like where I I don't want to like shrug that off or, yeah. or seem like I'm too good like for like the fans, right. especially in like this is home for like my wife and I. So like yeah. I like I I would love. To be able to put that jersey on again and, and, and play for the Cardinals before I retire. Yeah. Like it, it means like it's like the Cardinals hold a special place in, in my heart. So like for me to be able to like just be out walking my dogs with my wife, like not talking about baseball at all and, and to be stopped mm. and, and be thanked for like mm. you know, a moment in Cardinal history, like yeah. that, that like that means something. Yeah. No, that's that's cool, man. That is very, very cool. So anyway, to kind of wrap this up, so guys, as you know. At the end of all of our episodes, Money Mitch will ask us a Q&A question that is submitted by you guys, the listeners or the viewers. Now, we have a few ways that you can submit those to us. You can DM them to us on Instagram at untapped.llp. You can also DM them to us individually. You can also email them to us. Now, this is the mouthful, but extrications at gmail.com. There's also an email button in our Instagram bio, or you can leave your questions in the comments on our Instagram posts or on the YouTube video. So Make sure you do that, guys. We get a big list together. We just give them to him. He goes through them. He picks one out that matches up with the episode. Today, we do have a baseball-related one, but Money Mitch, do your thing. All righty. So, yeah, as Ward said, this actually comes from a baseball player. Yes. Um, so it's a really good question. High so, school kid. Yes. Yeah. Matt, how have the big leagues changed since you were a rookie in 2012? You used to face 90 to 94 miles per hour. Now it's 99-plus almost every game. <laughs> What else has changed, and how has it changed your preparation? Dang, very, he's very a good solid. kid. He's yeah. a smart he's kid. A great kid yeah. <laughs> very solid, good friend. Smart kid. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean that uh, it it has changed in a way where like guys are getting you know bigger, faster, stronger, throwing the ball harder. Like the starters, like he was saying, you know, and this was in Triple A this past year that I I faced like the starters that we faced in Triple A like. I would say on average their fastball was like 94 like which in triple a like yeah that's fast no absolutely that's yeah. fast in the big leagues for like for an average but like sure air, like all these arms like you you see like these like you know the training companies that you know are solely based for like pitchers and and mm-hmm. whatnot you know they're going and, and they're getting their arms like in shape faster and quicker than they ever have before to where like as a hitter like it's it's definitely harder i think to hit nowadays than it was like whenever i was a rookie like we had like back whenever i was a rookie in 12 like it was more like you had your you you know your your studs your like one and two like aces that would like flamethrowers but like there were also aces that like didn't rely solely on like miles per hour and they sure. could like pinpoint like you know they mm-hmm. had a they had a good two seamer that moved mm-hmm. down and away or they had a good secondary pitch like nowadays it's it's solely based on like velocity i feel like and wow. and and even even a step further is if you don't have the velocity of fastball then you have a nasty slider and yeah. you throw that 85 90 percent of the exactly. time exactly right where like you right. know like as a hitter you know walking up you're getting a slider mm-hmm. but it's still very hard to hit because <laughs> it's nasty. Right, right. well and some of those guys their <laughs> slider is like 90 to 92 yeah it's like what are we yeah. doing i mean <laughs> it's and yeah, it's, yeah and it's, it's, it's got a lot of I, movement, I know what's like, coming yeah <laughs> um but like as a hitter who's like trying to prepare for for that it's you know like we touched on a little bit at mm-hmm. the beginning of the episode it's it's all about you know looking at and you know 
Craig, who's the the hitting guy at, at Legacy that, that I work with, and you know Jacob's there every day. We talk a lot. Craig went and, and reviewed all my video and mm-hmm. like my my heat, my hot and cold maps of this past mm-hmm. season. So like he knows like areas that like I you know flat out sucked at, mm-hmm. and that was the ball up. So like to train, and, and nowadays when when guys are throwing that velocity, they're throwing at the top of the zone mm-hmm. to combat the whole like launch angle swing and, and sure. all that because it's mm-hmm. very very tough to hit ninety nine or hundred at the top of the strike zone, right? Because it has carry it you know, almost the looks way like it's rising. It. Yeah, yeah. And it's so like the way I'm preparing is you know I know what I I know what I'm good at, mm-hmm. and I'm not gonna lose lose track of of what i do well i'm I'm gonna do that but i'm gonna spend less time on that because i know that that's what i do well Mm -hmm. the the area that i'm gonna spend more time in is the areas that i know that i have to get better on and that's the high ball and that's what we've done this off season was you know my drill work and you know my my prep work to get ready to face Sheila, the, the <laughs> velo machine, that <laughs> bitch, um, <laughs> is I start with like nothing but high T. My mm-hmm. like my whole T rounds are you know high T at the top of the strike zone, and working on taking a consistent move to you know that I sh- the w- the way that I should hit that pitch, mm. and then I move into you know front flips. Some some days we'll do angled front flips to work on like the ball moving into me. Um, so I can't go like out over the plate to to go get the ball. I, I just got to stay in my my base and and you know trust my move. And then we move into the velo machine. And the velo machine because it's moving at such a high rate, it it has that ride that you know that pitchers are going to have that throw at the top of the zone. So like it's it's very very educated when we come up with a program to to work on in the off season at at this level. And I think it should be that way, you know, whether you're preparing for a high school season, mm-hmm. college season, or whatnot. Like, before high school, I think you got to let the kids be kids and, sure. and just go have fun playing the game. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But, like, high school is, like, very, very competitive now. So I Absolutely. think, like, once you get to that, mm-hmm. like, that age, you got to start having a plan of, like, how you want your, like, in, in high school, it's not off season, but, like, how you want to train to to prepare for you know how you how are you going to be better for the next season mm-hmm. and and you know after talking with some people that's that's what we developed for for this off season and know that that's what I got to get better at but but I think the key thing um, to to know here is don't lose sight of what you're good at mm. to, like to solely work on what you're not good at like you mm. have to work on what you're you're not so good at, so mm-hmm. you can become better at that. But don't lose sight of what you do well already, and sure. still practice that as well. Yeah, yeah. No, I like that a lot. I mean, even even with you, you know, it's not like it's not like we have you not pulling the ball. Yeah. You're a good pull side hitter. You're a good pull power hitter. You know, you know that we all know that. But it's not like we're saying, hey, we're never going to work on that. You yeah. know, like no, you're good at that. Why would we not strengthen that? Why would we not hone that skill still? But you struggle with the high ball. And I mean, every day you've been in this offseason, it's at least twenty to twenty five swings on that high tee. Yeah. You know? And guess what you're gonna do this year? You're gonna hammer the high pitch. Yeah. <laughs> and and, and, and I'm seeing it translate already, like in, in my exactly. work, like whether it's BP or or whether it's a you know, a pitch that comes out of the machine that, that is at the top of the strike zone, like I'm taking the move that I'm supposed to take now mm-hmm. to that that high ball instead of, you know, dropping my hands and being up underneath of that high pitch and and quite frankly I swung and missed a lot at the high pitch mm-hmm. because you know, I wasn't as direct as I could sure. could be to the ball. So like like it's like the the confidence in that is knowing that like what I'm working on is translating into the areas that I wasn't mm-hmm. so great at this past season. Yeah. Too. And with Sheila, you never know. You might get a random change up, oh, a random cutter. Yeah. <laughs> sometimes it'll be at your head, yeah. sometimes Sheila, it'll be at Sheila your ankles. Not nice to us, that's <laughs> for sure. <laughs> Uh, so basically, still play to those strengths, but address the weaknesses as needed. Yes, yeah, that's what yeah, it is. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's the, awesome. the biggest thing and the most common thing that you said today was have a plan. Yeah. Whether it's in the weight room, whether it's in the cage, whether it's in the relationship, like have a plan. Be prepared. Yeah. You know, and I, I think that it just applies to so many different things, regardless if you're a professional athlete or you're just, you know, Gen Pop, like you mentioned earlier. Like it, it doesn't matter who you are. Have mm-hmm. a plan. Be yeah. prepared. You know, yeah, and communicate. I, I think it just, uh, yeah, I think, you know, having a plan and, and focusing on your line of communication, I think those are two two skills that, that you know, 
anybody you know you can you can seek out you can get better at like you mm-hmm. like it's in you to to want to go and and hone those skills in like no yeah. one's going to do them for you right like you have to make a plan that that works for your lifestyle and you got to be open to communication yeah like I, I think that's i think that's two very very good takeaways of you know like you said whether you're an athlete or whether you're a gen pop like like those are areas that you can control and, yeah. and I, like i'll I'll say this, like it in in baseball and it translates into life life alone, like we we get so focused on controlling the areas that are kind of somewhat out of our mm. control mm-hmm. that like that I've really like been focused on controlling what I can control. What you can one hundred percent control. Yes, and, yeah. and not not worrying as much about the the other areas that are out of my control Mm -hmm. like i can control my effort i can control my preparation i can control my mindset Mm -hmm. and and i can control my work ethic that i've i put towards every in in every area of my life yeah and and i think that's a that's a way that that everybody should you know kind of look at things yeah no that's money dude controllables yeah no that's huge that's huge well, Matt, we appreciate the hell out of you coming yeah. on today. Thank yeah. you. This was, yeah, this, uh, this this was, was awesome. This, this was a great conversation. I mean, yeah. you were a great interview. Like, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, so, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Guys, make sure you share the show. Okay, as always, like, it helps us grow so much. And I know whether you're a baseball player or you're not a baseball player, I know you took a lot away from this episode. So, guys, share the show. Okay, it helps us grow. It helps get more ears and eyes on us. And that's what we want. Okay, we want to try and make an impact on as many people as possible. So, share it to your Instagram story. Share it with your friends, your family. Um, let us know when you're watching the YouTube videos, leave a like comment, subscribe, all that stuff. So guys, I also wanted to say too, Matt, if you want to drop where people can oh, find you yes. and whatnot not too. thank you. Yeah, no, you're good. Yep. Yeah. yeah. My, uh, I think my handle for both Instagram and Twitter is, uh, just at big city for real. Cool. Tough. All, all cool. one word, Tough. lowercase. Uh, <laughs> that's my nickname. That's what a lot of people call me by. So yeah. it's, uh, yeah. it's pretty cool that, I, that, that, uh, handle was available and, uh, just run with it. I, I got to be better at posting content and whatnot. So, like, if you're looking for content every day, I'm probably not your guy. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> you want some baseball content and and, and uh, a look into you know what my life in the off season uh, looks like with my family and whatnot. It's pretty good. Pretty good follow. Cool. Yeah. Cool, man. Nice, dude. All right. Well, guys. Until next time. Peace and love. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Time on